We want to thank John Hart and Bonnie for their inspiring vision, especially since we're heading into wildflower planting time. And thanks to Sam Wainwright Douglas and David Hartstein for contributing footage to that piece. Right now we're going to be talking about great wildflowers and native plants for hummingbirds. I'm joined by Andrea DeLongamaya from the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. Hello, Tom. It's always good to have you on the show. I love being here. And we have a great topic. Um, my all-time favorite visitors to the garden, <laughs> hummingbirds. Oh. And there's lots of great plants to talk about, right? Yeah, it's funny, like you see hummingbirds all the time and they're still mesmerizing. Yeah. They're just so liquid in the way they move and yeah. feisty. Very feisty. <laughs> feisty little critters. And they love our salvias, which is a great place to start when I'm talking about hummingbirds and a lot of good varieties for hummingbirds here. Um, mm -hmm. let's, we can start with this, the mealy blue sage or the salvia farinacea. This is a true performer. Yeah, it is. And I think that's a fun one to talk about because a lot of people think about attracting hummingbirds by using orange or red tubular right. shaped flowers, mm -hmm. but the mealy blue sage has blue flowers mm -hmm. and they love it. They go yeah. to it very, very readily. Um, so that's definitely a good one. And they bloom nicely in the spring and again in the fall, maybe a little bit through the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, you can keep them blooming by trimming them back periodically. Right. After they kind of bloom out in the spring, it's good to cut them almost definitely. to the ground and they start making little you rosettes. You go all the way back to the ground. Usually you start seeing new growth at the base and I'll uh -huh. wait till that shows up and then cut it back. Okay, and then that's a good they tip. Lush get nice lush new growth. I, I have been tending to deadhead them a little bit and then waiting and waiting. Yeah, <laughs> well you can do it that way too. Yeah. If you cut them further back then you just have more fresh foliage. Okay, all right. But you might have to sacrifice a few flowers. But a great plant yeah. um, and yeah. we have some uh, right next to that salvia gregei which is like the state plant of Texas. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's the go-to. It, it, it it's is. just a, a hard worker, yeah, yeah. it's the workhorse of the of the garden. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so Salvia gregia is also called cherry sage or autumn mm -hmm. sage. I think autumn sage is a little misleading because yeah, they bloom heavily misleading. spring and fall and <clears throat> off yeah. and on through the summer also. Right. Really great for attracting hummingbirds and some of the larger butterflies too. Mm -hmm. They get, mm -hmm. they all tucker out a little bit in summertime sometimes yeah, as well. Yeah. And a, a light shearing on those seems to revive them really nicely. Yeah, I think that's a good tip. And, uh, but so many color forms now, yeah, so like yeah. it's a little dizzying. <laughs> <laughs> I like to stick with the red, pink, and white shades. Mm -hmm. I've experimented a little bit with some of the orangish one, and, yeah. and they haven't proven to be as strong for me. I think, I think you're right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a fan of the purples and the pinks, yeah. uh, but, uh, and, and I've been very happy with some of those. And they're all good for hummingbirds, yeah. so that's great. Salvia coccinia is one of my all-time favorite plants. They're super easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Right, and good for shade if you're looking mm -hmm. for color in the shade. And they bloom all summer, right. a little more reliably through the summer than the other salvias we yeah, just talked absolutely. about. Absolutely, right. And you know, once they're they kind of established colonies, they're pretty drought tolerant as well. Yeah, I've been surprised too because I think of them as liking more moist soils, but yeah, yeah I've found them to be fairly drought resistant. Too. And come in a lot of different color forms as now. The native, of course, is red, but mm -hmm. there's white f color form and some really pretty coral colors yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And I've had good luck with all of those. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're a tad aggressive, but that's a good thing. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Speaking of a tad aggressive, uh, Turk's cap is another no. rambunctious plant, but I can't think of an Austin garden without Turk's cap. Yeah, uh, yeah, if you have shade, that is just mm -hmm. your standard plant. And, yeah. and why? Because they bloom so re readily and all through the summer. And on and on. And it's just a tough plant. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. beautiful red flowers. Again, mm -hmm. uh, there are some other color forms out there, but the native is red. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, every morning I go down to my car and I have mass planting of Turks cap where, near where I park. And there's a humming. There's always hummingbirds. There's always hummingbirds on it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are very programmed to go to that plant. Yeah. Um, my favorite are the red, just the standard red mm -hmm. colored ones. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a super plant, colonizes a large area eat readily. Mm -hmm. I like just to put plants that like to duke it out with each other, <laughs> yeah, you right. know, <laughs> salvia coccidia and the Turk's cap and just let them go. Tough things. <laughs> and and they'll, they'll find their way, you know, and really drought tolerant again once established. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we have another plant called the marshmallow, I believe. It's in the mallow family at it's least. It's in the mallow family, yeah. Right. So this plant I call, I call it uh, heartleaf hibiscus. Okay. Tulipan del Monte is another name. Mm -hmm. That okay. people are familiar with. Um, and this is a terrestrial hibiscus. Mm -hmm. Many of our native hibiscuses like aquatic situations. Sure. Uh, but this one you would see in kind of the scrublands, dry sure. scrub in mm -hmm. South Texas. So mm -hmm. light shade and very dry, good good drainage. Okay. Um, and but again, that color is just so fabulous. It is a beautiful, yeah. beautiful color. And, and, and again, a great hummingbird magnet. Yeah. 
really, I, I found that all of the plants that, uh, that are in the mallow family seem to be really good for attracting hummingbirds. Well, so the Turk's cap, the pavonia, mm, the rock rose pavonia, right. the hibiscuses, yeah. those are all, all good. All great stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I am really fond of our next plant, and I love yeah. the color on this one. It is. It's, it can be a little tricky to mix with other colors because if you have purples and oranges, it can be a little bit tricky, but mm -hmm. I love them with gray silver foliage yeah. or dark foliage, um, mm -hmm. and there are some other plants that, that look really nice with it. Um, right. So that's a that's an interesting color, but rock penstemon or cutleaf penstemon, mm -hmm. I've seen them growing straight out of rock, so it's yeah. really important that, that this plant get good drainage right. and not stay very wet. Yeah, I like to turn in granite sand when I plant yeah. this, yeah. and it, se it seems to respond really well to that. And, you know, it just it has a, a nice bloom season as well. Yeah, it does. It blooms later in the spring, but mm -hmm. kind of throughout the summer. Yeah. And it does respond to a little bit of light trimming when it's getting a little bit, when the flower stalks get kind of long, you just trim them back. I, I like to ha include it in the garden because it, it kind of a, is a spring extender in a way. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. it really does kind of keep things going there once the big kind of flush out mm -hmm. and early spring is, is on its way. Everybody's interested in gardening for uh, monarchs as right. well as <laughs> hummingbirds, and you've brought a, a native form of milkweed with you. Yeah, so this is aquatic milkweed. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Asclepius perennis, and it, because of its name, you'd think that it grows in water, which it does, or moist soils. Mm -hmm. Uh, and actually, I found that hummingbirds come to a lot of the milkweeds. It's not really what you think of, but right. uh, because it's a white flower, it's not orange or red. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a. It, we'll definitely see the hummingbirds come to it. And is this a full sun plant? I'm assuming it is. But, um, actually, it likes a little bit of shade. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So one of the few milkweeds that will tolerate mm. more shade, which makes it uh, appealing to. Well, it, it's very attractive it's plant. Very I'll, pretty. Yeah, and I like the the foliage as well as the mm -hmm. bloom. I like that the kind of needle-like foliage. And of course, that. it's good for attracting butterflies and bees as well. So yeah. it kind of covers a lot of covers needs. the territory. Mm -hmm. All the visitors are welcome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. flame acanthus, and, and we've talked about a few rambunctious plants. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one, but yeah, this I, it's so I, easy. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's just so easy, and and that really is good strong color for the summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they bloom a little bit later. You know, you, it, after the spring season with all mm -hmm. the color, then you get the next wave of the flame acanthus, also called hummingbird bush. Mm -hmm. That's why, because the hummingbird, hummingbirds really love it. Right, right. I do, because it doesn't bloom until a little later in the spring, I would say May, June, or maybe more like June, mm -hmm. um, you can lightly trim it uh, just to kind of keep the shape a little bit in bounds. I don't really think, you know, you need to keep it really tight, but no. just to kind of keep it a little bit shaped so well but then don't do it too much later mm -hmm. than that because you don't want to be cutting off the flowers we cut off the flowers or or, or force too much top growth because they do have these long long uh, stems that grow out and yeah those are the ones that I kind of like to just lightly trim back lightly trim it's, back. it's an aesthetic thing you don't have to okay. do that <laughs> all right well again super performer yes. I love the oranges you know really pop out in the garden a terrific plant and a lot of these plants I know are going to be available coming up soon yes. at the Lady Bird Johnson um, Native Plant Sale. Yeah, yeah. So our plant sale this year is going to be October 20th and 21st. Mm -hmm. Friday is our members only sale and then Saturday is open to the public. Okay. And we'll have all or most of these plants available at the plant sale, including milkweeds. I know everybody's very interested in very, that. Very much so. You know, until supplies last. So mm -hmm. things, the milkweeds in particular, send out, sell out pretty quickly. Okay, so uh, Friday, members only, Saturday, mm -hmm. Bring your wagon. Bring your wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, Andrea, it's always a great pleasure to visit with you. You too. Thank, Thank you, you for coming on board and uh, attracting the, those wonderful visitors to our gardens. We need to take care of them. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Coming up next is Daphne.